Hi, welcome to Chad Silversmithing. Uh, first, thanks for coming to my channel. I appreciate you visiting. Uh, it helps out a great deal if you would mind hitting the like button before you leave. I'd also love it if you'd leave a comment if you have questions, uh, constructive criticism, suggestions for videos, things like that are great. So uh, thanks in advance for any of that kind of stuff. Uh, I thought that um, today, I've uh, over the years I've made a few uh, articulated fish skeletons that make for kind of a cool pendant, and I thought maybe I would do one of those today. I picked out a little peridot for his eye, and I drew up a, a fish skeleton. Uh, I'm going to try and get the proportions just how I like this time. Sometimes they come out perfect, and sometimes they come out so-so, so I drew it up really carefully. Um, before we get started, though, I wanted to thank all of my YouTube subscribers. You guys rock. We passed 5,000. Actually, I just passed 5,100. That's great, and I appreciate all your support, both financially as well as um, the nice comments that you leave and things like that. I also wanted to thank my patrons over on Patreon. I love that community over there. They're a great group of people with a lot of skill. I appreciate all of the input they give me, and I hope they're getting as much out of it as I am. So if you're interested in any of that kind of stuff, make sure to hit the video description down below for the details. With that being said, let's get started. Okay, here's my little design idea book. Uh, if you like to sketch up your designs in advance, this has been one of the things that's really helped me to improve my skills a little bit. Here's my fish pendant. Um, what I like about it is these little, uh, it's got dots instead of uh, lines, but it's still kind of graph paper, so I can keep things proportional and and symmetrical much more easily without the lines distracting from me. So you should check it out on my merch store, which uh, there's a link in the video description. Uh, I drew up a couple of versions. Typically in the past I've put a, a, a circle on the top and then made one of my regular triangular, ba triangular bales. Uh, if, you'd, if you haven't seen that video, there's a, a link right there for it. That's a good video and a generic bale that works for a lot of things. I think on this one, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do a, kind of a hidden double bail back here, maybe some uh, half, skinny half round wire turned inside out, maybe, so the chain will flow nicely through there. But uh, the rest of it's going to consist of, like I said, a peridot for the eye, which I'll set with a 3 16 inch fine silver bezel strip, uh, probably 26 since it's a little tiny stone. Um, this will be 14 gauge square wire that I make the skeleton parts out of. So I need uh, one, two, three, four, five, six ribs. And then I'll make the tail out of that too. You could probably make this and this out of sheet if you wanted to. That'd be kind of a cool look. But I'm going to go ahead and make it a hollow frame kind of thing. This one too. So we'll see how that comes out. But yeah, let's make a bezel first for the stone. Uh, let me show you that stone. Hopefully you can see that there. It's a nice little pretty peridot. It's probably... Uh, where I misplace this ruler more often than anything else. Okay, so that's about a five, five millimeter stone. All right, so I find a little bit of 26 gauge, or 28 gauge bezel, 3 16 which is right here. We'll go ahead and file the end of this. I'm gonna go ahead and leave it kind of tall for now because it's gonna be set down in uh, inside of this 14 gauge square wire, so I'm going to have to elevate it a little bit. And it'll be easier to tell how far I need to elevate that once I have the bezel made and the rest of the thing made. So let's go ahead and get this going. I have another show this weekend. So this is probably going to be, well, this will be Tuesday's video. I'm going to have to film a Saturday video in advance, and then during the week I'll film Thursday's video. I think for Thursday's video I'm going to do some things that look like optical illusions. That might be kind of fun. If you like my content and you get tired of uh, watching the ads, I have a $5 a month tier over on my Patreon and you can cut out all of the annoying ads. Or if you want to experience some um, 
exclusive content, like I do a couple of extra tutorials just for the patrons over there every month. The last one I did was uh, how to make a sister clasp. One of my patrons over there has been asking me for a while to do that one, so I finally got around to it. But uh, there's four different tiers there. There's the $5 one, uh, which is um, just to get rid of the ads mostly and support me. The $10 one is uh, you get access to the exclusive tutorials and more one-on-one -on -one interaction with me. And the third tier is $25 a month, and we do some live streams in addition to all the other benefits of the lower tiers. And I have an upper level tier too, which nobody signed up for yet, but would probably involve some individual instruction via um, video conference. So check that out. There's a link in the video description. There's also, I believe there's a link uh, up top of my page too, but I'll double check. Definitely one in the video description. If you've never visited my channel, I use primarily hard silver sheet solder, and I use a spray-on flux called Mighty Flux. I get asked about my torch a lot. It's a Smith uh, they used to call it the Handy Heat Torch. I think they call it the Smith Silversmith Torch now. Which sounds fancier and less cartoony. <laughs> Some of the old fashioned. Uh, brand names for torches are kind of funny. I also have a couple of Presto Light torches, which are acetylene air torches as well. And they work just fine. They're probably some, one of them might be like 80 or 90 years old. I think they've been around for a long time. But I like how they named them like Handy Heat or Presto Light. Presto. <laughs> They work about the same, those two, and sometimes you can find those at garage sales on occasion. I think they were a popular plumber's torch back in the day. You just want to make sure to check it for leaks before you start using it. My first Smith I actually found at a flea market back in the 90s. I think back then I paid about 50 bucks. It was brand new in the package, but out of flea market. So uh, that didn't include a tank. However, I think they're more like two to three hundred dollars now, maybe more. I don't know. I haven't looked lately, but. Shoot that right off the table almost. I'm going to use a little bit of 18-gauge uh, wire to make some little jump rings so we can create a step bezel. This looks like a piece of 18. I've got scraps all over my table, so I just kind of dig around until I find what I'm looking for. Let's file this end flat. Okay, I'm going to set this back over here so I don't lose it. There's a lot of ways to make step bezels. You can use another piece of bezel solder to it at a slightly lower level, or you could, I mean, you can uh, use bezel plus some sheet, although that's going to make it pretty stiff. Um, I guess no stiffer than this, but um, the reason that would matter though is because you'd probably solder that on while it's still flat. This I'm going to solder in after it's round, so. It's been a pretty quick and easy way for me to make a step bezel. Perfect. You don't want it riding up the side because it's just slightly too big because that will create a crooked platform to set your stone on. That's always kind of a problem. <laughs>
Whichever one fits tighter I put on the bottom usually. That way if there's a little gap or something in between, if I cut it slightly too short, it'll be hidden under the stone, kind of. <clears throat> Flux it and then I'll set this right on top of some pieces of solder. Plopped it right on top of there, and then I'm going to heat it around the outside like I would just any other bezel. Even if it's got a bottom on it. Okay, let's make sure it flows completely. Oopsie. It makes for a nice bottom on a little step bezel. And I may add another ring if I need to at the end, but uh, right now, I need to start making some pieces. I pre-cut my pieces of ribs, and the way that I did it was I took a piece of square wire in order to get kind of a curve. Oops. I just grabbed it made kind of a nice, tried to make a nice symmetrical curve like this. You could do it around a, a bracelet mandrel or something, I suppose. And then I just did this and I cut them off at the lengths that they needed to be like that and just cut them individually. So the other thing I'm going to need to do is make a bunch of little jump rings. They're going to have to go vertically on the one side and horizontally on the other. Um, and probably on the ones that are facing forward, I'll have them split on the side when we solder them on so that we can hook them and then solder the links. So, uh, like I said, on the back we'll put a, a hidden bale kind of. But I think let's make the head first. So, um, I think I'm going to file a notch with my bastard file a portion of the way through there. I'm going to mark it so I know I have enough for the each side of the head here. So I'm going to make it about there. About there. The reason I'm going to file a notch is to enable me to be able to bend it more sharply. So if I tried to bend it just like this, it would be kind of a rounded point. And I want it to kind of come to more of a... What I perceive of as a stylized fish head look. <laughs> Alright, so I've got it kind of partially filed through. You can bend it like this. That's probably about right, so I'm going to solder that, and then I'll be able to bend it into a little curve. You may notice that I, uh, when I'm soldering, most of the time I do what's called pick soldering, where I pick it up with on, on the end of this uh, tungsten little pick. And what that does is that allows me to precisely place the solder where it needs to go when the temperature reaches at about the right, right stage, which for hard solder solder is 1450 degrees and you can just kind of plop it where you want it to go. It really improved my silversmithing skills so I would recommend uh, learning how to do that. It speeds things up immensely so I'll put a link up there for my pick sorry. You know play with bending this a little bit to get it to be the curve that you want. trick that I do sometimes if I want to get a real precise, uh, precisely where I want it to, to make a mark, is I'll use a marker uh, because it's much easier to see a scratched in, 
scratched in mark through the marker than it is just on the surface of the silver. So, so I can probably cut it like parallel with that line that I just made. File those down a bit. The thing that I like about these articulated fish is that they move nicely. So I really need to just make a slight curve here. A little more than that probably. I should break into the classic Dr. Demento show song Fish Heads bit. If I did that and started singing, all of you would immediately unsubscribe. <laughs> Let's make the tail while we're at it, I think. That's what we're doing this sort of thing. Got this. Now we need a tail. I think. We don't probably need to uh, cut as deep of a trench in that one. That's kind of what I'm looking for. It's a little bit longer than my initial sketch on the tail, but we can always adjust that if we need to. Not sure if I should use 18 or 20 for this. 18 is going to be a little bit stronger. I think we're going to want pretty small size here, so I think I might wrap it around a piece of 14 gauge round. I do this a lot to make pretty small rings where I just wrap it around another piece of wire, like typically 14. I suppose I've done it around 16 a couple of times. Get a really small one. Okay. So I need to make a whole bunch of links here. And I think I'm going to solder on the sideways ones first. Um, and I'm going to put those on the bottom. We'll start with this and solder, solder it flat and then we'll keep adding them to the tops of all of those guys. Um, so I could do this a couple of ways. You could take your saw you know, and lay this on a, uh, a bench pin. Probably if you kind of put a, a groove in your bench pin and then so it would hold it in place a little better. That might work pretty well, but I'm just going to use my little ones that cut flush on each side to get it pretty close to, to being a flat cut. That's probably enough. Um, 
So, I have, uh, if I talk about the, the ones that are going to be vertical on these, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of those. And for those ones, I'm going to solder them closed right off the bat. Okay, so I'm going to set those to the side for a minute. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a number of these split ones that I have. So rather than soldering these ones closed, I'm going to create a little bit of solder on the bottom side of them so that the split, when I solder it on, will be off to the side there. That way I can loop them through the vertical ones I'm going to put on the opposite sides. So and then solder them shut. I'm going to add a little bit extra on that one. I didn't kind of want to jump over there. There we go. use of the magnesia block here. Should be able to just grab them like this. Make sure everything's fluxed uh, on here and just uh, heat it up to the point where it flows and plop it on there. With a little luck. I'm going to toss that one in there. I'm going to fish out the head. So I was initially going to mount this inside of there, but I think it looks better on top. And actually, I'd need a, probably a smaller stone if I was going to do it down in there, or a bigger head. So I think I'm going to go ahead and mount it on top. We'll kind of change plans a little bit. And then we'll put a little bale on the back and we'll let this all pickle before we connect it together. There's solder in case I need it. There's likely enough solder in the bottom of this uh, bezel. Flip that upside down there. I have some half round that's pretty skinny. I think it's uh, probably 12 gauge half round, I guess. Turning it so the uh, rounded side is inside of my little shape that I'm making here. Okay, so once I have those both relatively symmetrical like that. 
Okay, I'm going to attempt to solder those down. Okay, I think I got it on there, so into the pickle for a while. Okay, I think it's time to start connecting these uh, pieces together. So I need to get them all attached. And I did a little bit of cleanup with the, uh, the Dremel in advance here, just so it was easier to get to while, while it was not attached yet. But I'm just going to pick solder these closed, theoretically. I'm just going to pick it right there. But I need to cut a bunch of little tiny pieces of solder. inadvertently solder anything together there. <laughs> the trick to doing these is heating just the piece you're trying to solder, keeping the flame away from the other ones. Like the ring I'm trying to solder is, is really attached to that little link that I just soldered onto the previous link, or the tail in this case. So I gotta keep the flame kinda pointed at the little piece without getting everything else hot. I guess you could probably do these unsoldered. Probably be strong enough. I always like things soldered so they can't ever pull apart though, if you can, if you can do it. Soldering these little tiny clothes rings like that is sometimes a little challenging, so. 
will probably end up on the advanced list because of that. Could use easy solder, I suppose, but even then, it's still pretty tricky. That is not to say it can't be done. It's all polished up. I'll go ahead and set the stone. stage is called burnishing and I just use the rounded outer part of the needle nose pliers. Just kind of rub that top edge down as smooth as you can. Okay, so we're pretty much done. Put that on a chain and get better pictures. I'll probably do a little cleanup around the bezel here. I, it's a little wonky there, so I'm going to try and fix that a bit. But that's going to be our little fish pennant. So it's got really nice movement. That's what I like about it. Mm. And it's just fun, you know? So that's fish. Well, that was the articulated fish pendant. I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, make sure to hit the like button before you leave. I'd really appreciate that. And um, check out some other videos here. I have lots of content now. I have over 200 videos. So uh, peruse some of those. There's some great pr uh, playlists. If, say, you're a beginner and you want to just focus on beginner projects, you would check out the beginner playlist. Uh, so there's lots of tools like that on my channel you can use. Uh, after you do that, though, uh, make sure to subscribe to my channel. I'd love to have you as a subscriber. Um, and again, leave uh, comments or questions, uh, challenges, things like that in the comment section. I love those kind of things. So, uh, Thanks for watching. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. Happy silversmithing. Take care.